So even if you're an extremely keen finance person, even if you follow all of the meme accounts, and if you read news articles all day, it's almost impossible to try and evaluate the different private equity firms. Almost all investment firms prefer to operate in some kind of secrecy. They don't like being too in the public or being too in the spotlight, and that makes it kind of difficult to evaluate the different firms as a potential candidate. Look, even if you're in investment banking, unless you're in the sponsors team, it can be really difficult to assess what it would be like to work at each of these firms. When I was recruiting, I also spent a lot of time trying to research different firms, but it still was difficult to come up with a reasonable opinion of what those firms would be like. So today, I'm gonna to try and share with you the different factors that you should be aware of as you're thinking about different firms, as you're thinking about which offer to take. The first factor and the easiest way to categorize private equity firms is by fund size. And that's closely related to the investment size that you're going to be making. And the investment size is a direct input into the size of the businesses that you can deal with. From a competitive standpoint, private equity firms tend to compete with other firms that have similar amounts of money. If you were to break down the private equity universe into a couple of key layers, the first layer which invests the most amount of money at the biggest magnitudes would be the mega funds, which we've covered in a separate video. And these mega funds by far have the most amount of money. A lot of the times, the mega fund institutions also invest into other asset classes like real estate and credit. And their private equity funds are just a lot bigger than the next group of people. If you try and cut the data, most of these mega funds have at least 10, generally $15 billion that they can deploy specifically for private equity. And this would include firms like Blackstone, Carlyle, TPG. And with this amount of money, you can easily deploy up to a billion dollars per investment. And the mega funds are really the only firms that can deploy enough money that they can actually take these relatively large public companies private. The next category would be these upper middle market players. And again, it's kind of difficult to set hard lines in the sand, but I would say this starts at about the $5 billion fund range in which you're deploying between 200 and $500 million per investment. At this investment size, you could take a majority stake into a $1 billion or $2 billion company. You could easily finance a Series D or Series E into a fast growing business, and you could invest into a pipe in a public company. You still probably can't invest enough money at this level to do a take private of a large public company, but you can invest in almost every other kind of structure. And examples of firms in this category that are very successful would include Berkshire Partners, American Securities, and Avery. And I would describe anything below this category to kind of be the middle market, the lower middle market. And in these categories, you might have slightly more regional based private equity firms, and you're generally dealing with smaller companies overall. I'll make one distinction that growth equity can also be defined to this level of magnitude of investment size between one and $100 million. But growth equity from a purely investing standpoint is more focused on companies that grow really quickly that tend to be looking for their series B or series C and are looking to continue a very fast growth trajectory. Growth equity investing tends to be a little bit less LBO based, meaning that they're not necessarily focused on generating cash flow and paying down debt. But strictly speaking, from a lower middle market private equity standpoint, you are still dealing with companies where you're trying to LBO them, you're trying to buy them out completely while they pay down debt. Now, there are no hard and fast rules, but as a result of this categorization, I think it's instructive to look at the fund size that a firm has raised. Generally speaking, a fund is going to hold between 10 and maybe 25 portfolio companies. So the fund size that you have is going to directly relate to how many investments you can make. Just looking at a real world example, Onyx's latest fund has $7 billion and on their website it says they have a minimum investment of $200 million, which would mean an upper bound of about 35 portfolio companies. The next thing that I think is important to be aware of is industry focus. And we've talked a little bit about specialization, but you do start to specialize a little bit at the associate level. After your first job is kind of when the scope begins to narrow. So if you do have an industry preference, I do think it makes sense to lean into it a little bit. It'll just make it a little bit of an easier story when you're talking to headhunters. I would say that at most private equity firms, there tends to be a generalist platform, meaning that the fund itself will invest into a bunch of different industries. However, you still might get dedicated to a specific industry group, just like in banking. 
Even if you join a mega fund, for example, you might just be joining their healthcare team. In which case you would want to think to yourself, would you rather be in healthcare at a mega fund or would you rather continue to do TMT potentially at a specialist fund? And I think it's an important consideration to have because although brands are important and I think there's generally a slightly higher correlation between mega funds and better recruiting outcomes, I think you're still going to be better served if you know you like TMT or you know you like natural resources and you go to a fund that specializes in that industry. I think it's going to open up more relevant opportunities for you afterwards. And when you start to invest, you just already start to cultivate a pretty unique skill set. So you want to invest as much time as you can into that skill set. In terms of the actual players, I think there's a lot of very high quality specialist TMT funds. There's a bunch of firms that have made a great name for themselves by specifically focusing on software or media. You have firms like Silver Lake Partners, as well as Vista and Providence Equity. Consumer is another industry that also has specialist funds, including LGP, L. Catterton, and Sycamore. The third big factor I think is important to be aware of is investment structure. And the majority of private equity firms are going to invest sort of just like vanilla equity, but there is also a philosophy in private equity that focuses more on value-oriented investments and distressed investing. And in this category of investing, you're dealing a lot more with a capital structure, meaning you have to know your way around different debt instruments. And a lot of the times you're going to be dealing with exotic securities. These kinds of firms will try to acquire companies at much lower multiples that other private equity firms either won't look at or don't want to do the work to try to improve. And maybe they're trading at a lower multiple because they're close to bankruptcy or they're mismanaged. Apollo is undoubtedly the firm that is most famous for this kind of investing. They've put up insane returns over the last couple of decades and they're definitely a coveted place to work. Other similar firms include Centerbridge, Cerberus, Searchlight. These are all firms that will look at both debt and equity and invest across the capital structure. I would say that those are by far the three biggest filters you should be aware of in fund size, industry, as well as investment structure, because those are going to impact your day to day quite significantly, as well as the kind of work you're doing. The next factor I would say is important, but sometimes is less important as an associate because you're not always getting economics in the fund. And that would be the fund size growth and the returns that they put up. Now, just like a company's valuation, it's always kind of a bad sign if a firm is raising smaller funds over time. So that's a good thing to be aware of because if they're getting bigger funds over time, that means the returns have been good and that means investors are more willing to trust them with their money. You obviously want to learn from good investors. You obviously want to surround yourself with people who have done well recently. And the last thing I would do is some cursory research online so you can understand different organizational questions. It can be helpful to look out for attrition. If there's a lot of junior people leaving, if they're not even finishing their associate stints, honestly, it generally means that the firm is really sweaty or extremely intense. And I find that senior attrition is more linked to fund performance not being very good recently. Another important consideration that a lot of private equity associates want to know is whether the firm will sponsor for an MBA or not. It's not a vital question, but it can save you up to $300,000 down the line. So if they do sponsor you, that's obviously a huge benefit and it can be very aligned with your own career goals. And I would say the last thing and also a very important thing to be aware of is whether you get co-invest and carry. And we talked about what co-invest and carry are in the private equity salary video, but over time, it can materially improve your wealth. It's not as evident at the associate level, but getting points earlier over time into good investments can really compound. At the associate level, I think the biggest factor that drives your salary is going to be fund size. So if it's something that you really care about, make sure you go to a mega fund and try to go to one that's been doing very well lately. I'll make one final note on culture. Obviously, culture is an extremely important part of how we experience our jobs and you want to be in a place that you fit in with. But honestly, I think it's a very difficult thing to assess externally. The only way I think you can get a valid opinion about a firm is if you've spoken to someone who has recently left there. Because most people in finance at private equity, they have enough of a sense of pride where they'll want to say that they're working at a sick place, that they really believe in the culture. And especially when networking is so closely tied to recruiting, it can be hard to get very thoughtful and candid answers about people's experiences. I will say that talking to my friends and having worked at a couple of finance places, most private equity firms, most investment firms are going to have a culture that's within half a standard deviation of one another. They're all going to be intense places that really care about making money and minimizing mistakes and are going to be relatively intense. And that's not a bad thing. It's a great environment to learn and grow your career. 
as a firm, if you're asked to manage large amounts of money, the culture just kind of standardizes across the industry. And I think it's hard to try to solve for an especially nice or friendly place. Anyways, this is all just my opinion, but I do hope that it's helpful to you as you decide between different private equity firms and which offer to take. If you're interested in learning more about the recruiting process, as well as private equity modeling, you can of course check out our website at peakframeworks.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.